You remember me? Hey. A little older. Huh? Girl. This is a, good a woman has come to revisit some dear old friends. Are you smiling? I'm smiling. I'm so happy to see you. Chimpanzees have provided us with so much in this world, so much knowledge about ourselves, about our social lives, about our dispositions, because they are so much like us as beings. Our closest living relatives have given us perhaps more than any other creature. So intelligent and hauntingly familiar, entertainment was only the beginning of their legacy. In the 1950s, young chimps were drafted into our burgeoning space program. When we deemed it too risky to send our own kind, we sent infant chimpanzees to probe the outer limits of our universe. With a physiology so much like ours, they were the perfect pioneers. Sharing 98% of our chromosomes, they soon became the ideal models to test life-saving drugs vaccines, and countless medical techniques. For years on end, routine liver biopsies and solitary lives in cramped steel cages was all that some would ever know. Linda Kobner was a 23-year-old graduate student when she was asked to participate in a bold new project. A hepatitis vaccine had been found and certain chimps were no longer needed. Would they be capable of a normal existence after life in the lab? On a January morning, a small group of chimpanzees caught their first glimpse of the sun in over six years. They were terrified to get out of the security of that transfer cage, whether it was afraid to step on the grass. They hadn't been on anything but hard bars for years or just the feel of the wind and the sun. And they just huddled in the doorways and wouldn't come out. For the next four years, Linda spent every day with the chimps, watching over them, observing their journey back to wholeness. It was a grand experiment. No one knew whether it would work, but it did. Swing. Good girl. What a pretty girl, isn't she? You're a good girl. 25 years later, Linda's come back for a long awaited visit. A few of her old friends still remain. Remember me? Dolls making her smile too. <laughs> oh. well, come on, let's get okay. the It's been 18 years since Linda has had any contact with Doll and Swing face to face. It's been so long. There's no telling how they'll react. Oh, you look great. Even her old friends are now wild animals. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Do you remember me? Girl, hey, remember me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Who's that? Huh? Oh, Who's that? Sweet. It's okay. It's okay. Not too quick. That's good, doll. Oh, doll. <laughs> These chimpanzees have taught me about resilience. Um, all of these have gone through such tremendous adversity, and yet they're forgiving and they're whole again. Good girl. Is it 
you remember me, you remember a lot of things, don't you? I don't think Lion Country even knew it when it started, but it, it has provided wonderful sanctuary for these chimpanzees. Over 30 chimpanzees have found their way to this refuge in southern Florida. Each chimp arrived with a history. They all bear the scars of the past, but here they've been given the chance to live out their days with others of their kind. But there's one chimpanzee who may never see Linda's dream come true. Oh, my Sparky, look at you. One of her old friends, Sparky, is in the hospital. I'd love to grow you a little. Only 32 years old, he looks like an old man of 60. Thanks in large to this chimpanzee, today we have a vaccine for hepatitis. But Sparky paid the price. I've been hoping to really have a good diagnosis and be able to treat him, but nothing's gonna work. And so I'm fortunate to be able to say goodbye to him. I love you. Sleep tight. Good night. Goodbye. Sparky died two days later. But his legacy lives on. Linda and her colleagues have been given 200 acres of land in Shreveport, Louisiana for the nation's first large-scale chimp haven. Her dream is coming true. It's important not just for me, but it's important for all of us as a species to realize that all animals are individuals and they have feelings and thoughts and they suffer the pain and the joy that we do. And they're entitled and deserve an opportunity 